Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy J Rocks. Today I'm gonna be doing a review overview of um X Men or Road to Onslaught Volume One. I, I didn't see any videos up on it, so I thought I'd throw one up since I just finished reading this. Um, here's the cover. See Juggernaut laid out right there. Got Psylocke up in here. Uh, this is the spine right here. Road to Onslaught Volume One. Is the back of it. This one's a little dinged up here. This is what's um what issues are included there. 322 to 326 of Uncanny X-Men. And issues 42 to 45 of regular X-Men. And also X-Men Unlimited number 8. And X-Men Prime. So get an idea what's up in there. What creators and artists are there. This is a cover price of uh, $40. 40 dollars. Forty four Canadian at the time. It's a four dollar difference. Obviously, if it was today, um the Canadian dollars a lot weaker, so it'd probably be like fifty something. Okay, here's um what you will read after. After the Roar to Onslaught, this is the Onslaught Complete Collections. Volume one, two, three, four. Or you could buy an omnibus. Here's a table of content. Oh, it has another cool picture here. Again, here's all the creators. Includes issue prime. Uh, this is not a bad setup. But it's pretty cool. You on this one thing, you get a few of these these two page spreads that are horizontal or, di or what would you call this? You know, they're at that this weird way. These are cool in singles, but or in omnibus, but I don't think it really works in trade paperbacks because of the gutter loss you get not on the end of every single issue but on a few of these you get this like bonus features see it shows the cards that were out at the time these cards are from 96 um let me see the name of them 1996 Fleer x-men some of the artwork right there these were i remember these being like thick cards that's one of the special chase cards i guess Yeah, so you get some of those. That's pretty cool. You always get in the covers included. They give it this border, so it doesn't look exactly like the OG cover because they give it this. I wish they just made it bigger the size of the whole page, but that ain't no big thing. It's still pretty cool. A lot of two-page spreads here. Yeah, there are some good storylines of um. It's a lot about uh. It's a uh, this is the twentieth anniversary of the mutant massacre. When this came out, or the 15th year anniversary, I believe. So they touch back on that story. They bring it back, and they don't just revisit the past and just tell you the same story. They, like, add to that story. They add, they show how Gambit and Storm could have done things differently, and maybe that whole massacre would have had a different outcome. So this this issue has a very good character development. It also has a lot of, um, it touches a lot on, like, choices. Choices Sinister has made, Gambit has made, Storm... How uh, their choices have um, had a big impact on the outcome of stuff. Maybe they could have done, if you, any one of them would have done things differently, it, uh, that massacre might not have happened. Here you get one on another one of those crazy two page spreads at sideways. This one has a little less gutter loss because it's about in the middle of the book. But that's a nice page right there. The art, for the most part, is pretty good, but you get a few different artists. The others some are a little weaker, but. But most of the art is, is passable, it's pretty good. Here, here's a big character moment with uh, Storm and Gambit basically kind of breaking up because she, she found out about things about his past, uh, she, you know, she wasn't liking. So she's, she's out, you know. She has to rethink this whole relationship. Another two-page spread. You find out, you know, typical Mr. Sinister, like he always does. You find out all this stuff that happened, all these secrets of Gambits. Sinister comes down and turns out he used to, you know, somehow he was manipulating him, and manipulating him back in the past. That's what he usually does. He works behind the shadows and lets other people do the dirty work. Okay, now here at the end, you, you have this issue called X-Men Unlimited. There's a series that was going on back in the 90s. It's X-Men Unlimited issue 8. This is a really good one-shot. It basically tells you 
if you read this, this is what the X-Men are all about. They find young kids when they barely, their mutant powers are barely manifesting. Catch them and show them how to deal with them and how to control their powers. Before they meet somebody else like Magneto that manipulates them into using them for bad. Basically, you know, like a regular teenager would be, you gotta guide him down the right path before he gets into drugs or, or you know, crime or whatever. This, this is basically what the X-Men are all about. Saving the youth, stopping them so they could become, you know, productive in society. They don't just become a burden. And this story kind of tells you how things work out when the when they work out the right way. This is what happens. This is the outcome. When the X-Men do their job. And then I'll show you a story later. We got in plenty of stories when things don't work out the X-Men's way and some go down the wrong path. So this is a real good issue. I like it. If you read this issue, if you get this book, this issue, and you don't know much about X-Men, this issue basically tells you what they're about. This lets you know this has a really good uh, feel of what the whole series, what the team is there for. They're not there, there, they stop crime and stuff, but this is what, what they're really uh, here for is originally this, but with their powers, if they can stop terrorists or whatever they will. Here at the end, this straight paperback has some good bonus content, good bonus material. We got this two page spread right here. It looks nice, I'm digging it. Oh, that one looks nice too. Made for Madripoor, Gambit and uh, Ro looking all sexy. Then it tells you a little background and this is like a swimsuit issue. We had a lot of these back in the nineties. Psylocke and Wolverine. Then it tells you a little some some on them right there, and then the Salvador and Serge are the two artists, artists and colorists, I guess. I'm digging this one. I was liking this one. I don't really like the way they drew Kitty Pryde here, the way they portrayed her. But Storm's looking good. And look at her body here. It's very like like a realistic body. It's not all super perfect like they do a lot of these other characters. I'm curious, who's the artist here? It's um Cam Smith and Gary Frank. Ooh, this is Gary Frank. This is in the 96. His work was a lot different than it is now. That's for damn sure. We got Iceman. So you get some nice bonus material. Uh, it's a good story too. I definitely, I would re highly recommend this one. If you like X-Men, you want to find out about them. It's a good pickup. You can find it online for about, you know, 20 bucks. Some more of the cards right here. Has nice bonus features too. I would have liked to seen this done in a hardcover. It's a lot of, for a trade paperback, has a lot of extra content, bonus material. Uh, more than some of the hardcovers and uh, omnibuses have. A lot of pinups. Alright guys, that's all I got for you right here. Hope you like this review. If you want to get further into the actual story, and maybe you don't want to buy the book, but you want to know what happens in it, I'm going to put it in the link below the two storylines, uh, the X-Men and the Uncanny X-Men. And uh, yeah, just hit the links, check out the story. I'll read it back to you on those videos, and uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. If you like this review, you want to see more of them, let me know in the comments. Hit that... Uh, Hit that subscribe button so I can keep you updated on your feed. It'll, it'll let you know when my next video's up if you subscribe. And also, you know, hit that like button. It helps the, you know, the video get around and so forth. And yeah, like I said, that's all I got for you today. And I'll check you guys out next time.